It's a somber day here at the Driver Rehabilitation Center. In fact, what you are about to witness will be the 100th worst hour of my life. You see, we've already gone to air with 11 full seasons of the country's most horrifying motoring show. On top of that, six brand new episodes have been broadcast this season. And during the course of our long tenure, we've produced five specials. That is 99 shows, which means this. Oh, and it, it, it makes me sick to say this, but ah. this is the 100th episode of Canada's Worst Driver. Come on, just, just do it. Come on, cue the car crash. We all know it's about to happen. This is not fun for me. During their time at rehab, Canada's worst drivers have done many things that you, the audience, have not witnessed. For example, they learned to parallel park. I do believe that we just parked Cadillac Coopville. Amen. They learned how to do three-point turns in a confined space. I understand the concept of the three-point turn. And they were taught how to shift a vehicle laterally using something we call an S-turn. This is the same garbage can that you used to be this far away from. Oh, really? Yeah. Now, it's time for all of those lessons to come together in one big annual challenge called the cross. Drivers will have to maneuver into four separate concrete parking bays without scratching the paint on our beautiful 1999 Volvo V70. Oh, I should have mentioned, this fancy European Volvo is a right-hand drive. And Daniela is a little freaked out by that. Honestly, if I was in England, I would probably move to Canada just so I wouldn't have to drive on the side of the car. At home in Kitchener, Ontario, Daniela is a little freaked out about all aspects of driving. Stay here. I don't want to. We'll get off at home. Ah, this guy is Daniela? coming in front of me. <laughs> I, I'm not even kidding. Daniela's sister, Chantal, nominated her as Canada's worst driver. Stop yelling, and I'll, I'm gonna calm down. Back on our cross course. Daniela is stuck. Don't keep hitting it. On this season of Canada's Worst Driver. You hit it? No. We started with eight bad drivers, and now we're down to the worst four. I can hear it, Danielle. Don't keep driving into it if you're hitting it. That means there's only one more person to graduate before our eighth and final show. I think I'm stuck again. I think she's gonna be in episode eight if she keeps driving like this. That's our legal expert, Cam Woolley. Beside him is our high-speed driving instructor, Philippe Letourneau. Shamala Kiru is our resident therapist. And Tim Danter is our head driving instructor. It's this panel of experts that helps me decide who graduates and who will have to stick around to be in our final episode. Done. Daniela will probably be in the finals. Okay, well, it's a fail, but like I fail at everything, so it's not surprising. Crystal will also probably be in the finals. Are you gonna try? I am trying. Does it look like I'm trying? Shut up and Get out. drive. Get out. Crystal's brother, Steven, nominated her as Canada's worst driver. Because at 
home in Edmonton? Cell phone addict Crystal drives more selfishly than anyone we've ever had on the show. That's a red light. Nope, I made it. On the cross course, go. Selfish Crystal, get out, idiot, has kicked her brother out. And move fast because I will run you over on purpose. Without her brother in the car. Oh, f well, now I'm stuck. I might as well just go. Crystal drives without any regard for our property. I'm in. How did we get to show seven and you're still scraping the hell out of the side of one of these cars? I refuse to give up on Crystal. There's simply too much at stake. I think it's too late. Yeah, it's I think I jumped late. on board too late. Tyler is up next. Oh, oh, oh. Every day, Tyler leaves the small town of Innisfail, Alberta, and drives on the highway to get to his job as a welder. But one day while making that journey, Tyler slammed into a garbage truck that had run a stop sign. That stop sign there, I was driving just like that guy is, and it felt like it was, I hit a tank, you know? That's how fast we stopped, you know? When he stopped, the scaffolding Tyler was carrying struck him in the back of the head. And last episode, I learned that that plays into why Tyler is such a bad driver now. He has muscle memory tissue, like damage, to the part of his brain that has, like, sense synapses to his muscles. Okay. And his thoughts and his short-term memory loss. That's Jana, Tyler's wife. Tyler's performance on our cross course oh. might be the worst so far. Oh, that wasn't good. He seems destined for our final episode. High five. I'm not high-fiving you on that one. Why? Tyler sincerely believes he did well. Holy Yeah, that wasn't a good run. No, it wasn't. I don't wasn't. understand how you think that was good. Lou has a terrible habit of overthinking and underdoing. Okay, my plan is to reverse back and then and then Esther myself into here. Okay. So in order to do that, I need to reverse and turn myself this way. Well, now I'm all confused. Now I'm confused. At home in Winnipeg, uh, Lou gets confused by multi-lane roads. Am I good? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. <sighs> okay, that was scary. Lou gets confused by pedestrians. Oh, watch, 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 watch. <sighs> See, I can't do this. And, well, let's face it. Lou gets confused by everything. Go to the mall or something? That's Derek, Lou's common-law husband. Oh. Mall has a very big, busy parking lot. Okay. On our cross course, you guessed it, Lou is still confused. Like, I don't know if I should just give up. I don't no, know how to do this. No, you're not giving up yet. I'm just gonna quit. Lou doesn't quit. If she did quit, she'd definitely be in our final episode. It's a good day at the office. <laughs> it's a good day. When we come back, Canada's worst drivers learn how to do a reverse 180 degree spin out. Why wouldn't you shut your eyes? Because if I'm gonna die, I'd rather not see myself die. Then, a little bit, a lot of it. They're challenged to do a spin out in a confined space. Stunt driving in public carries some pretty hefty fines. If you're caught doing it here in Ontario, you'll get your car impounded on the spot. But if you are able to practice stunt driving techniques on private property, you're gonna learn about pedal control, weight shifting, and overall vehicle handling. Stunt driving is actually an excellent teaching tool. With that in mind, the next challenge for Canada's worst drivers is 
to learn how to do a 180 degree spin out in reverse. All right, ready for more training? Training, training, training. Absolutely, I'm always looking forward towards training. Good. Training starts with Philippe demonstrating the maneuver. Holy The reverse 180. To do a reverse 180, you need to be going approximately 40 kilometers an hour, then... Let's go to gas, wing one oh. way, swing the other way. Two quick turns of the wheel will create the spin out. 40 kilometers per hour, let's go to gas. Oh, my God. That's it. Oh. <laughs> you okay? That was scary. Let's break down what's happening this time. Philippe gets going 40k an hour, then suddenly lets his foot off the gas and turns slightly in one direction. Freeze! That slight turn slows the car down, which causes its weight to shift. Watch it again. As he suddenly turns and slows down, the rear end of the car drops because it's now heavier. When he turns all the way in the opposite direction, the now lighter front end loses its grip and spins all the way around. Oh my God! Remember when Canada's worst drivers arrived in rehab? I'm at 40, I'm at 40, so let go. Et voila. They couldn't reverse to save their lives. I'm at 40, off the gas a little bit, a lot of it. Et voila. Now, they're all enjoying difficult reverse driving. Okay, let go to gas, a little bit one way. Et voila. Well, they're not all enjoying it. Let go to gas. A little bit one way, hard the other way. Stop. Why did you close your eyes? I don't know. I don't know. I'm just so scared. What's the most important tool that you have to operate a car? My eyes. So why would you shut your eyes? Because it feels safer. Because if I'm going to die, I'd rather not see myself die. For the 180-degree reverse flick challenge, drivers will be behind the wheel of our fancy new Mustang. Well, it used to be fancy. And they'll be doing the spin-around stunt maneuver inside this confined space. So? Boom, just like that. Getting caught doing this maneuver in public could result in a fine between two and $10,000. Nervous Daniela is up first. Wow, that sounds like a fast takeoff. Here's her first attempt. I don't know what I'm doing. Hold on, hold on, I need to start over. Hold on, sorry, hold on. Sorry, I need to start over. I didn't realize it was gonna take off that fast. You've been driving this Mustang every day. How could you not realize it would take off that fast? <laughs> I'm a slow learner, remember? Oh, I remember. Yeah, no, I know. Did you know that about yourself before coming to rehab? No, I thought I was just dumb. So sad. She didn't know she was slow. She just thought she was dumb. The car moves fast, yet she's slow. Ironic. Yeah, that's, uh, that's slow. Drivers will get five chances to pass this challenge, and Daniela is capable of passing. Am I? Of course she is, and she knows it. <laughs> I told you I could do it. I knew I could do it. Daniela records a rare pass. How many challenges have you passed in rehab? Two. <laughs> Two's better than one. Two's better than one. Earlier this afternoon, Crystal and her brother Stephen were literally physically fighting. What are you guys, 12 wrestling and punching each other in the face? Get over it. So, I will be her passenger on the reverse spin out. Is there a specific spot where I'm supposed to take my foot off the gas, or it's just up to me? 100% up to you. The maneuver must be done inside the box. Okay. I mean, don't, but. Oh, 
I don't know if I'm going 40, and I don't know if I'm in the stand box already. Okay. Off, little bit, lot of it. That's it, you got it, bang. Just like that. See, First done. try. Oh, well, look how white I am. I'm, <laughs> I'm perpetuating cultural <laughs> stereotypes. <laughs> Crystal and Steven were fighting <laughs> simply because Steven was demanding that Crystal drive without her cell phone. Tell me you love your brother. You know he's got your best interests at heart, right? Andrew. You do know that? Andrew. Tell me you know that. Andrew. I know he does. On Tyler's first attempt, he hits the brake mid-maneuver. Oh, I hit the brake. What will he do wrong on his second attempt? Nothing. Holy cow, he actually can. How do you like that? Tyler, you did something. Yeah. Woot, woot. I did it. I did it. Yeah. I'm so impressed. Scared the out of you, didn't I? <laughs> After Tyler's lesson with Philippe, Tyler did homework. I did it. I wrote down the steps, I studied it, and I nailed it, and that's why I passed this test. Lou could make this an all-pass challenge. Are we going to have four success in a row? I don't know. Don't jinx it. It's looking like we will. Stop, 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 stop. All right, all right, all right, all right. You hit the wrong pedal. It's all right. Just take a minute. Have a breath. It's all right. On her first attempt, Lou made the worst mistake of all. Attempting to hit the brake, she stopped on the gas pedal. Stop, 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 stop. Well, that must have hurt a lot. Lou's frustrated now, which is terrible, because when Lou has confidence, she drives well. But when Lou gets frustrated, she drives badly. Case in point. Now they're going to put me as the worst. She won't be the worst if she passes it on her third attempt. <laughs> oh my god, I did it! Lou did indeed do it. When we come back, Canada's worst drivers try to balance our teeter totter in a pedal control test. It's impossible! We now present the Bob Ross Show. Happy Little Accidents. Smooth and steady. Smooth and steady. Smooth and steady. We're just going to highlight our windmill ever so gently, smoothly and steadily. Same thing now on the teeter-totter. Smoothly and steadily. We're just going to highlight. Just highlight smoothly and steadily. When Canada's worst drivers get on their teeter-totter, their pedal control is going to be just like your hand, smooth and steady. If they, oh dear, no problem. Just remain smooth and steady, even if something goes wrong. This is all about control, pedal control. Canada's worst drivers have smooth and steady pedal control. We're going to find out on the teeter-totter challenge. Daniela is up first. Guess what we're doing now? What? We're doing a pedal control challenge. OK. Guess what you have to do? I have to balance. You have to balance. Yeah. 
So here you go. This is where you get good at pedal control. Yeah. Off the brake, on the gas, back on the brake. Oops. You got to put it in reverse, though, or everything will go a little, 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 little bit wet. Holy <laughs> yellow. Sorry. It's all about finesse. You don't want to be too hard on the gas or too hard on the brake. It's to find that perfect balance. Finesse. These are mute. Is not Daniela's forte. Drivers will get 10 minutes to balance this contraption. Don't forget, reverse. Reverse. Oh, yeah. If they fail to succeed, that's way more. You're too heavy footed. They have to tell an embarrassing driving story. It's too far. Whoa, okay, pedal control, gain, gain control. I can't, it's impossible. No, it's not. Daniela's embarrassing story involves running into her husband's brand new snowblower. Because he hit the gas instead of the brake? Yeah. Because you have no pedal control. Mm -hmm. And then what did you tell him? Well, I don't think he even knows until now. <laughs> no. Lou is up next. <laughs> okay. Boy, you're all, did you luck right into the middle? Ooh, oh, that's so. damn close right out of the gates. Lean forward. That's damn close. <laughs> okay, whoa, whoa, just hold it. Hold it, hold it. <laughs> Lou did it. Oh, my God. <laughs> Tyler comes close. Wait, 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 wait. But he just can't find the sweet spot. I'm trying, man. I thought this would be the easiest one of them all. Tyler's most embarrassing story involves his protruding trailer hitch. I hit the front end of a car trying to back You dented in. it. I dented it. And then I left. Crystal had promised to stop bringing her phone to challenges. Pedal, where's your, where's Steven? I kicked him out. Well, why'd you kick him out? Because he said that he doesn't think I'm gonna stop texting and driving in motion on the roads with other cars. And so, so rather than just talk or, or discuss, you're like, get out of here. Yeah. Pedal control, how's yours? I really, in all my five seasons here, have not seen anyone as poor and as abrupt on pedals as Crystal. No, 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 what? no, what? no, what? no, what? no, 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 you can't. No, this is not about using your left foot. This is about pedal control with one foot. Oh, Police find often the cases where the little old lady or the little old man drives through the restaurant, they pushed the wrong pedal. They were using two feet and got confused. Sorry. No, I had it. Yeah, exactly. And then you gummed it. Yeah. Impatience. It's my problem. Nope. You're a delicate flower. You're a lotus floating in a pond. We can move this of back. Of tranquility. And peace. And peace. And slow driving. Yes. Low octane gas. Nice. Yes. I think I did it. Is this good enough? That's good pedal control. That's the best pedal control of the day. Crystal passes. But I still want her to tell an embarrassing story. I hit his car so hard, bumper fell off, and then I just drove away. Fell off? Yeah. That's Crystal's worst driving story. What's the most embarrassing? Um, I tried to drive between two small cars and I pretty much ping-ponged us the whole way. It was like, pam, 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 and drove away. What's your next worst hit and run story? Uh, I hit and run my mom. What? <laughs> For real? Yeah. Where was she parked? In her parking stall. And you nailed her and you drove away and you never told her? Nope. Ever? Ever. Look down oh. that camera and say, sorry, Mom. No! What the f You didn't... Sorry, Mom. When we 
come back. Oops. Canada's worst drivers do a slalom where the distance between the foam figures is set by us. Then they reset the course to what they honestly believe they can accomplish. I'm quite the honest person. And here's my honest opinion, Andrew. F you! Canada's worst drivers haven't just been on our closed courses this season, they've also been driving in public with our expert, Tim Danter. Thank you. This My pleasure. Good. This is a fun experience. Daniela's goal in rehab was to overcome her fear of highway driving. Continue to breathe. Like I feel like I'm going to start passing out or something. Because you're not breathing. And Tim believes that Daniela is finally ready to go it alone. Would you feel confident maybe next time out just going by yourself? No. No? No. If you've got a Hawaiian hula girl on your dashboard and she's dancing as if swaying in the Polynesian breeze, you're probably handling your car quite well. However, if she's flailing around at the waist as if she's a human who's in need of an exorcism, well, you're probably taking your turns too too fast! Uh, the next challenge for Canada's worst drivers can be solely judged on the behavior of the hula girl will be putting on their dashboard. That's right. It's time for an annual driving test that we call Know Your Limits. It's a high-speed slalom. For the Know Your Limits Challenge, drivers will come down this runway at a speed of 80 kilometers an hour. Then they'll slalom between these foam figures that are placed 35 meters apart. Once they do that, we'll ask them if they can do another successful run with less space between the foam figures. Will they know their limits? And while doing all that, Canada's worst drivers will be behind the wheel of this pristine 1977 Town and Country station wagon. Here we go. Woo, Nelly, this thing takes off like a bat out of hell. I love it. 20, 30, that's 40 miles an hour. This ancient speedometer displays imperial information. 50 miles an hour is equal to 80 kilometers. That's 80K right there. Now, small little turns are the keys to this. If people get wide, they're gonna lose control and hit. I hit nothing. So, by what distance will I reduce the gaps between the foam figures for my next run? Do Canada's worst drivers know their limits? I know mine. I'm not doing it again. That's as tight as I can go. Daniela is up first. At 80K an hour, everyone should be able to pass this challenge. Everyone. 20, 30. Again, 50 miles an hour is the equivalent of 80 kilometers. Are you sure that yeah. I have to go 50? Keep going. Nice, easy oh. movements. Nice, easy Okay. Shh, 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 shh. Okay, I'm at 50. Okay, look where you want to okay, go. 50. Shut up for a second. Oops. Oh. oh my God. Does Daniela know why she slaughtered two of the foam figures? I don't know. Oh, not with the I don't know. You can't still do the I don't know. Well, I don't know. Do you remember which ones he hit? I don't know. It were too late in the process to drive badly and, and say, I don't know what happened. Which ones did you hit? I believe I may have hit the last three. You hit number three and number five. But, okay. But not number four. And the next question is, how much can we tighten it? And you can still do it. The question is not how much can we tighten it up and you can't. I want to know 
how much distance we can remove between those people. It's at 35 meters now. How much distance can we remove and you can actually do it? And keeping the same speed? Mm -hmm. You'd have to widen it, I think, for me. I have to widen it for you? Yeah. To what? It's at 35 now. What would we have to do? Like 45? 45. And you could make it at 45? Yeah. Once the course is reset with 45 meter gaps between the foam figures, we'll learn if Daniela knows her limits. Whatever happens this time, I want you to be able to tell me about it afterwards. Okay, yep. This feels like I'm going too You're fast. You're going fast enough. Okay, now I am. Okay, around the pink person. Around the blue person. Good. Around the pink person. Good. Around the blue person. Good. Around the pink person. Go through it. Oh. Daniela doesn't know her limits. And she doesn't know what just happened. Did you look at the last one? What, what did you do? Where? No. No, I didn't. I didn't. I was looking around it. Like, I, I went that way, and then I just got so excited, and I just clipped it. No. I just you went through it. it. I didn't go through it. I clipped it. Daniela's wrong on two counts. She wasn't looking around the foam figure. Around the pink person. She was staring right at it. And she didn't clip it. She hit it solid. How can she not know that? I like, I don't know. You can't like, I don't know. I don't know, though. Like, I don't get it how I'm so dumb. Has Tyler learned enough to know his limits? What's the greatest thing that you've learned in rehab? Well, for one, drinking and driving doesn't cut it. I agree. Tyler, baby! The guy used to, you know, do the unthinkable. Drink and drive on a regular basis. And sober, he's one of Canada's worst drivers. Maintain 50. I lost control now. I'm... I hit the brakes and all. I did because I didn't want to create an incident. So the question now is 35 meters between each foam figure. What could you squeeze those gaps to and still be able to do it? Okay, let's try five. With five meters of distance removed between each foam figure, Tyler's on the road again. Now maintain that. Tyler surprised even himself. I didn't hit a thing, man. It's awesome. When we come back... Oh, I'm not doing this. Crystal's cockiness gets the better of her. drivers are being tested on whether or not they know their limits. Oh. And Lou is up next. Lou looked where she wanted to go. Now, how much does she want to reduce the gaps between the foam figures? I don't want to short that distance. Perfect. Wow. That's what we Very want to see. Very nice. Crystal believes she will be this episode's graduate. Yes, I think I have the best skills of everybody who's left. 30, 40, 50. 
50 miles an hour is the correct speed on this 80 kilometer an hour course. Okay, looking in this hole. Looking in this hole. Nope, oh, I'm gonna crash. Where do you wanna go? Gonna crash. You got I'm it. gonna crash. No, I'm not gonna crash. I'm not gonna crash. Crystal doesn't crash with 35 meters between the foam figures. How much can we remove in terms of space between every foam figure and you're still able to do it? That's the real test. 10 meters. Headed back to the start line. Where's my phone? The woman who promised me just yesterday that she would never text in a moving vehicle again is texting while in motion on our busy course. The crew's actively resetting right now. She's got that phone right in front of her face. She's a danger. Crystal, you're killing me. You're absolutely killing me. Why do you think I'm saying, Crystal, you're killing me? I got no clue. Maybe I should text you the answer. What do you got, eyes everywhere? How the f do you know I'm sending messages? Crystal, you told me that you don't lie, and you told me that you will never again text in a moving vehicle, only if you're stopped. On the road, on the road, I won't. Now you're driving one of our cars while our crew are walking around and you're looking at your phone while you're driving a moving vehicle. Don't you grasp that the optics on this are a little wacky? I'm sorry. I think that's a lie. I don't think you're sorry at all. I think if you were given an opportunity again, you'd immediately go back to texting and driving. Please stop that. It's dangerous. Nothing you're texting is that urgent. Okay. Stephen, what do you think about texting and driving? Do you think that one week after she leaves rehab, her, her need to say, hi, how are you, while driving will lead her to texting while in motion? Yes, sir. You. You do think so, hey? Get out. Okay. Stephen's honesty too much for you, Crystal? You, Andrew. Why? What did I do? Well, I said I'm sorry. And I don't want him to be talking to me in my ear. And if anybody thinks I'm dishonest, well, they can go themselves. Because actually, I'm quite the honest person. And here's my honest opinion, Andrew. you. My head is going to explode. Crystal says I don't understand millennials, and she's right. I don't. Oh, I'm not doing this. Asking for the gaps between the foam figures to be reduced by 10 meters was a disaster in the making. I've said it before. I'll say it again. The overconfidence that Crystal displays behind the wheel makes her the most dangerous driver we've ever had on this show. I don't know my limit. When we come back, Canada's worst drivers discuss graduation. Next, what else you want to talk about? Should we not bother discussing this or? I don't know. I don't really have anything to say to you. Which nominee for Canada's worst driver will avoid being in our final episode by convincing our experts that they should graduate today? Will it be Crystal? She was the best in our reverse spin-out challenge. You, you, you did fantastic. That's really hard. That's what I find strange about you, Crystal. There's some things you do that are, are really tricky, and you do them really well. And other things, fairly simple stuff, like not That's texting. That's my whole freaking point, is that easy driving is boring, and it sucks and that's why I don't do it good that's why every time I'm trying to drive nicely on the street I almost get into an accident so that's why I drive like an because then I don't get into accidents but you do get into accidents okay but that's not when I was driving like an why the hostility I really don't get it crystal like I'm what why did you come to rehab people said oh it'll be great for you they'll teach you lots of stuff you'll get lots of help 
Do you think you've tried to get help? Um, I think that I was met with a brick wall at the beginning, and that makes me not want to do something. What was the brick wall? You are a brick wall. I'm a brick wall. So why, like, during half the times I see you, do you tell me you love me and this is great? Next, what else do you want to talk about? Like, what, what is the brick wall part of me? All right, let's just jump yeah. to the gimme questions. Okay. Do you want to graduate this episode? Obviously, I would like to get the f out of here. Daniela doesn't want to get out of here. I want to be in the finals just so I can test myself almost and see if I can do it. Lou doesn't want to be in the final episode. I think I deserve to graduate because I've learned a lot. Tyler's also learned a lot. Should he graduate? Yeah, I think so. The two potential graduates in this episode are Tyler and Lou. Who should it be? Lou. Hmm. Okay, Shamla? I'm gonna go with Lou. Uh, Philippe? I'm gonna go with Tyler. Because? Well, he did pass the reverse 180. He did good with the um, ice speed slalom. He came this close to passing the teeter-totter. Cam? I think we have to do it purely on performance, which means Tyler gets to go. Tim's decision isn't based on this episode's rehab center challenges. I go on comparison of what they showed me on the road. What did you see in those, in those drives that we didn't? This episode, the person who will graduate came down to you, Lou, and Tyler, you. And the choice of who ultimately should be that graduate came down to me. So, who did I choose? Well, I am deciding to graduate the person who I feel best understands what's happening around them. Tyler? That's not you in this particular case. Oh, man. Lou, you know oh, you're the graduate. You're it. Oh, my God. Here's your driver's license. Oh, my God. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. Thank you. Before coming to rehab, Lou had only driven alone four times. I just, I don't think I can do this. Even an empty parking lot was overwhelming for her. I don't know what I'm doing. In rehab, Lou had a tough time getting started. I have no idea what I'm doing. And it was several shows in before she even passed a single challenge. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> I did it! I did it! I did it! And right. But after closed course lessons with Philippe... I did it! I did it! Awesome! and public lessons with Tim. Oh, that's so awesome. Well done. The pieces finally started to fall into place. Did I just park a trailer? And Lou became a real driver. Oh my God. Way to go. I did it. Before, I couldn't even drive the car from point A to point B without feeling scared and panicky and like I didn't know what to do. And now I can drive. <laughs> Oh, I go to this side this time. I go this side. Let it go, Lou. Let it go, Lou. Keep up all the progress when you get home, hey, Lou. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Bye. 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 Join us next episode when these three finalists drive me in public. Then one of them will be named Canada's worst driver. That's me. <laughs> oh, boy. On the final episode of Canada's Worst Driver. The nominees do our annual three in a car challenge. Oh my God, we're gonna die. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. We test everything they've learned in the Mega, Mega, Mega Challenge. <laughs> I almost did it! And 
Once they drive... Did we just run a red? I don't know. In public... Oh. Stop! Stop! With me! Slow down. I am slow! One of them will be named Canada's Worst Driver. Ah. Woot, woot. I did it, I did it. Yeah.